Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. In our video today, we'll be explaining the function and working as well as the construction of a hydraulic pump or the hydraulic actuator for a main engine exhaust valve of a two-stroke engine. Through this topic, we'll try to explain how each component of the hydraulic pump works, how the cam profile or the motion of the cam assists in actuating the exhaust valve and also we'll be including the important role and understanding of virtual tappet on a two-stroke engine's exhaust valve. So let us start. In the hydraulic pump or the hydraulic actuator of a two-stroke engine's exhaust valve, the design simply consists of a piston that is moving within a cylinder assembly. Now, this piston is moving upward as well as downward because of the motion of the follower onto the cam. That means, simply put, when the cam is at its peak pushing the follower, the piston would be at its topmost position. And similarly, when the cam is in its dwell profile, the piston would be at its lowest most position. Now, we all need to be familiar with the fact that the cam profile for a main engine exhaust valve cam is always a mirror image when viewed from the central axis. That means if you were to cut the cam right at the center into half pieces, the first piece would overlap completely onto the second piece. The importance of this fact is that even during the reversing of engine, the exhaust valve timing would not change as a virtue of this identical cam profile. So, when the cam is at its peak and the piston is pushed up, the hydraulic oil which is flowing through the non-return type wall at the inlet side of the hydraulic pump allows the oil to flow in just prior to this stroke that is the upward stroke and once the cam is at its peak this oil is now getting compressed and as a virtue of its incompressible nature it is getting pressurized. Now when the correct or the adequate pressure is achieved this oil is the oil that is this pressurized oil is the one that is going to push the hydraulic piston the exhaust valve's construction downwards and thus open the exhaust valve. So, this oil flows from the hydraulic pump through the high pressure line which is covered by the sheathing into the top part of the exhaust valve and thus pushes the oil piston or the hydraulic oil piston down and thus opens the exhaust valve. As we already know in our video discussed previous to this is that the air piston then as a virtue of the air pressure closes the exhaust valve and during this time only simultaneously the cam of the hydraulic pump goes to its dwell phase thereby lowering the pressure that is the hydraulic or the basically the oil pressure inside the high pressure line and that is why the spring air piston is able to push the exhaust valve spindle up and close the exhaust valve. The downward motion of the piston within the hydraulic pump or the hydraulic actuator is also assisted by the concentric spring. So, what this spring basically does is that against the upward pressure which is exerted, it slowly and in a controlled manner again then when the cam is rotating towards its dwell, pushes the piston down and brings it at its lowermost position. So, when the cam is turning and the piston is moving upward, we have to remember it is against this spring pressure. Also on the hydraulic pump, there would be a delivery valve which is going to control the pressure as well as regulate the flow of the oil into the exhaust valve system. This is also to make sure that no extra or excessive back pressure or pressure due to the locking of oil is exerted back onto the pump and thus preventing the pump from any sort of damage. Now, another important operational aspect of this topic is to understand that when the lube oil system or the basically the circulation of the oil starts or initially starts to run, the oil is in a comparatively lower temperature or a colder state. This means that as the oil is circulated throughout the system, it is inevitably bound to pick up heat and thus a subsequent rise in its temperature would be witnessed. This also means that the oil expands along with rising temperature to a certain measure and thus if you were to compare the hotter oil inside the same piping or inside the same construction would keep the exhaust valve open for a higher duration as compared to the colder oil as a virtue of the volume occupied and the pressure exerted. Now to counter this operational blockage what we do is that we have a feature on the exhaust valve of a true stroke engine which is often called as the virtual tappet. 
This virtual tappet is nothing but more like a bleed off valve or a throttle valve. What happens is as the oil expands and it picks up temperature as a virtue of the heat that it gains, this throttle valve bleeds the oil in a very controlled manner to keep the pressure within the system to the regulated measure as it is required to open the exhaust valve. Much like any other throttle valve, this would happen obviously because of the change in the cross section area when the oil flows through the valve and also against the pressure which keeps the throttle valve in a closed position for most of the operation and because of the mechanical tightening force that is exerted onto the spring when we are initially positioning or orienting this throttle valve. Yes, another important aspect is also to understand that the throttle valve much like any other place of application is again dependent on our setting. So now one of the lesser discussed topics which is also a lot of times asked in various MMDs and also at a lot of other places is that how do we set this throttle valve or basically how do we set the pressure on it. So for that during the running of the engine at at least 75% of its rated load what we do is that we open the throttle valve that is the tightening nut we open it counterclockwise until the point where we hear the knocking of the exhaust valve and it has to be done only until the slight sound of knocking appears and not complete or loud knocking. Then once this noise is audible to your ears, you again tighten it clockwise 30 degrees from the position that it just was. And thus the throttle valve initial setting is done. This is for the case where we actually know that there is slight exhaust leaking in the system. However, if there is no exhaust leakage in the system and the operation of the exhaust valve is adequate, we will simply turn the throttle valve 150 degrees from the fully closed position and let it be. I hope that this extensive video helps you to understand the working of the hydraulic pump, the buildup of pressure and the subsequent actuation of the exhaust valve and also the idea of virtual tappet and its importance in a two-stroke engine exhaust valve. If you still have any doubts, please feel free to drop into the comment section and ask us your questions. Also, subscribe our channel and share our videos with your colleagues and teammates and help our channel grow. Thank you.